All right, howdy guys. Uh, I want to take some time today to talk about Plex and Jellyfin, um, two of the most popular home media servers. Um, so both of these, you know, can be run on your local network, um, but they have some pretty distinguishing differences, and I think it'd be kind of beneficial to talk about those and see why you'd want to use one or the other. So starting off, uh, let's just kind of go over Plex. So Plex is by far the most popular home media server. Um, if you know someone in tech, they probably know about Plex. So it is proprietary slash freemium, so it is not entirely open source. Um, it's really easy to add content to, it has really strong forum support, and the Plex Pass has some additional features. And getting into that, so to give you an idea, it's five bucks a month, forty dollars a year, and one hundred twenty dollars lifetime. So I will tell you, like full disclosure, I do have a lifetime pass. I don't have any sponsorship or anything with them, but it is something that I do use. Um, and this is a user subscription. So it's not based on the servers you're running, but actually on the user accounts you have. So for me, uh, the way I manage my Plex Pass is I have myself and then my family members um, all under the same account name, which would be mine. Um, and that gives them access to all the Plex Pass benefits, but anybody I share my content with from my server do not get to reap the benefits of Plex Pass. So just going through some of the features on it, it has client downloads. So, you know, on your client device, you can download the videos, music, uh, or what have you. Uh, hardware transcoding, which we'll go into a bit deeper. Um, a really nice mobile dashboard, actually, that I use pretty frequently. Um, intro skip for, like, TV shows um, during the intro sequence. Um, the ability to watch live TV. HDR tone mapping, if you're doing, like, um, you know, that kind of H.264 rendering or H.265 or MKV, what have you. Um, movie trailers and extras, um, Plexamp, which is their uh, solution to like a mobile device that's also on the desktop um, for listening to music. Then it also provides music lyrics for when you're listening to music if that's something you're after. So getting into Jellyfin, um, this one is kind of what's known as like the FOSS alternative, right? So it's free and open source software. Absolutely no payments are required. Um, it has great documentation. It's also really easy to add content. Um, and in my opinion, it has a lot better community integration and support. Um, where the Plex has really good forums, I'll give it that. Um, their documentation and their community integrations are just kind of unmatched. Um, it has built-in Samba support as well. Um, so if you you know create on your local network a Jellyfin instance, it will also create a Samba share that you can access over SMB or you know using Samba with Linux to see your media files and edit them without having to go into like uh, FileZilla or WinSCP or whatever FTP um, client you use. Um, and then it also does require some additional configuration and knowledge. Um, and just kind of to get into that, so Jellyfin runs by default on port 8096 on your network where Plex runs on port 32400. Um, Plex, you pretty much just need to open the port um, in your network and let Plex know and it will kind of hook in and do the rest. Where with Jellyfin, you have to kind of manage that yourself. So I personally run it off of one of my domain names, um, and I just use a reverse proxy to take port 8096 and put it on port 443 under a subdomain. So let's get into some server support here. Uh, you're gonna notice the big three, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows, all supported on both of them. Uh, FreeBSD is supported on Plex, where it's unofficial on Jellyfin. Um, again, this comes a lot down to community integration. Um, so they both do have support there. Docker, both of them have um, uh, images provided by the companies that created these, right? So they're not community images. Um, for NASs, um, Plex does have support for multiple OEMs, primarily um, Western Digital, um, but also like um, pretty much most brands in the sun, uh, Asus, um, and a lot of other big brands as well. Pretty much if you have a NAS, there's a pretty good chance that Plex can run on it if it's uh, relatively beefy. Uh, and then NVIDIA Shield is one that is primarily only on Plex. That's something they really targeted. Um, and then I did also make a note that Plex has limited router slash storage servers. So very few, I think it's three Netgear routers can run Plex. And then the WD My Passport Wireless Pro can also run Plex. Um, I wouldn't really um, recommend those use cases. Um, I could see the router being beneficial, but especially on like a WD My Passport Wireless Pro, um, I wouldn't use that as a long-term solution. Maybe just as something you're taking mobily, but at that point, that's what Plex is for, so you can have your content with you without having to carry anything around. So, client support. 
This is definitely where Plex is again going to win just a bit more because they have such a larger community backing and then they do have the dollars that come in from the Plex Pass. So Apple TV is on Plex where it's not on Jellyfin. Uh, they both have Fire TV, Chromecast, Roku, Android TV, Apple Play. Um, again, with Smart TV, Plex has most of the major OEMs, where Jellyfin is still targeting soon on many different OEMs and their support is a bit more limited. Um, iOS and iPadOS, both Android, web browser, both. Um, Kodi, it's a plugin available for both. And then PlayStation on both and Xbox, it's on Plex and it is a work in progress in Jellyfin. So Jellyfin is a still a bit more in its uh, infant stages, as you can see just from its support. It is um, built off of MB, which is a, um, a bit older version um, of a home media server. So they are still kind of working through the kinks and getting integrations. And then, so this is the API and metadata agents, metadata agents for both of them. So Plex has um, definitely a fair bit more. Um, but it gets a little bit more complicated. So Plex has their own. So they have Plex Movie, and then they have Plex TV series, and then they also have Plex Movie uh, Legacy. So these actually pull from many different um, API providers, and it kind of does its job to find the best match. Um, that is a really nice feature of Plex. Um, and then it also supports the movie database, um, the TV database, and then for music, it uses Plex Music and Last.fm, where Jellyfin is using a bit more off-the-shelf tooling, um, which is definitely not a problem. I honestly have less issues with Jellyfin uh, matching my content, even though it's less API providers. So the movie database, the open movie database, and then it uses Screen Grabber to grab its images. Um, and then for music, it uses Music Brains and the AudioDB, um, as well as Image Extractor to get images for album art and stuff like that. And um, I will tell you another nice feature is if you are ripping your own music, um, a lot of the free tooling you're going to use is actually going to align really well with Jellyfin. Um, like I know I personally use Music Brains in the AudioDB uh, when I rip like my flax off CDs. So even though it is a little bit more limited looking, um, I do think it's better than the last FM meta, uh, yeah, metadata agent. Uh, moving forward, uh, this gets a little murky um, and it's going to be your hardware acceleration. So Plex does require the Plex Pass for hardware acceleration, and that's going to be Intel Quick, uh, QuickSync, NVENC, and then AMD's GPUs, um, they they reference in their hardware acceleration, and it's unfortunately something I haven't worked with. Um, but what I have noticed is it looks like most people running AMD GPUs are relying on DirectX APIs built out of Windows. So I cannot confirm or deny Linux support. Um, but it seems to be more whispers kind of in the community than something that's heavily um, worked on. And pretty much everyone says, use QuickSync or NVENC. Um, then for Jellyfin, it's got a bit more support too. So Intel QuickSync, NVENC, it's got the AMD uh, AMF or Advanced Media Framework, and then the VA API, um, which is a bit more processor based, and that's for Intel and AMD. Um, I personally um, do use NVENC on Plex, um, as well as just regular hardware uh, software transcoding, depending on what I'm up to, um, where with Jellyfin, I entirely rely on software transcoding for my workloads. Um, and then this is going to be more from the administrative perspective, um, looking at content sharing. So a big reason you might want to have a home media server is to share content with your friends and family. Um, I know personally, my policy is if I lend you a physical Blu-ray, you're welcome to my Plex server. Um, so it's really easy on Plex. Um, pretty much you go to the dashboard, you say you want to add a user, and then this little screenshot right here shows, add, enter their username or their email, so I just ask people for their email, and Plex does the rest to hook them up. I can choose what libraries they can see and what libraries they can't see, I can choose ratings for them if they want that, um, such as like, you know, if they can only watch G, PG, and PG-13, um, and it just works really well. I um, run this for a few friends and uh, family members, and it usually takes very little configuration and troubleshooting to get them live. And these are people who are or are not tech like uh, focused. So some of them barely know how to use their iPhone and some of them are running servers like me. So um, I think overall it's a really great um, tool and I think it works really well. Jellyfin is a bit more complex. So whether using the web browser or an application or uh, like access from your phone or a TV or whatever, um, you're going to have to do it through an IP address or a fully qualified domain name. 
So I hang mine again off of a reverse proxy on one of my domains. Uh, that's why I blacked it out. Um, and what you're then gonna have to do as, as an administrator, create an account for them. So they will need to know to go to this IP address or this fully qualified domain name, um, enter the credentials, and you have to verify ahead of time that it's ready for them. So it's, it's a bit more clunky, um, but there's good reason for it. Um, and we can kind of get into that just a bit later, but let's go forward and look at some resource utilization graphs here. So as you can see at idle, um, Plex pulls about 250 megabytes or less, and I have a pretty extensive library, um, probably about five or six months worth of content. So that is pretty much just keeping the database online, keeping the web server, um, <coughs> excuse me, accessible. And um, yeah, so you're looking at about 250 megabytes of RAM usage and almost nothing on the CPU. This is a Ryzen 5600X, so it is a pretty performant CPU, but you're not really tasking it very much. And then looking at Jellyfin, at idle, it pulls about a gigabyte. Um, it's also a very low resource utilization in terms of uh, CPU usage, um, but it does require much more memory. And we're gonna see that even further because if we look at um, this stream I did, so I did a 4K H.264 high 10 stream, um, on Plex, we're pulling about an additional gigabyte of memory. Or on Jellyfin, we're pulling about an additional two gigabytes. So that puts the entire load of about 1.5 gigabytes on Plex and three gigabytes on Jellyfin just for one stream. Uh, if you look at the CPU utilization though, they're actually very close. Um, looking at 65.3 versus 63.9, that is within error. Um, so the way it transcodes using software is very similar. They're probably using a lot of the same open source tooling, um, but there is a lot more uh, RAM utilization uh, when it comes to Jellyfin. And then moving forward, um, administrative perspective. So again, I got into this a little bit. Um, Plex is super easy for your client users. That's really its greatest tool. Um, it has really great built-in mobile and web tools. So again, I have a dashboard through the web browser and I have a dashboard as well through my phone. If I need to, I can actually access a web dashboard directly to the server if I'm having any weird issues. Um, but it does require phoning home. And this is gonna be kind of a sticking point for a lot of um, FOSS users. So even for local access, if you are just accessing content locally, um, all of the account management is done via Plex. So that means every time you wanna sign in, it's going to go to your Plex, it's gonna go up to Plex's main servers, the ones run by the company, and then pulled back down to your server for your access. So while it doesn't really store logs of what you're watching, when you're watching, and all of that information that is locally on the device, you still have to phone home. So one great thing about a home media server for me is if the internet goes out, I can still watch you know TV or movies and kind of pass the time even though I don't have internet. Um, you can't really do that with Plex. So that's a really unfortunate hurdle that I really think they need to find a solution around for when you are on local access. Um, and there might be a solution in place, um, but it is definitely not out of the box. So with Jellyfin, uh, you're gonna get more feature-rich web administration and better plugin support. So because this is an open source project entirely just made for the passion of making better home media servers and making them open source, um, plugins are a lot easier to find, manage, and administrate and the web administration is just a bit more finely tuned in my opinion. Um, and then again, a really big benefit here is there's no phoning home required. So everything is staying local to the device. Um, and for some people that is going to be enough of a reason to use Jellyfin. Um, but personally, what I do is I use both. So as you saw on that previous page, my resource utilization, both Plex and Jellyfin are running on my server at all times and they have different use cases. So for me, Plex is really great for sharing content with other people. It's also my preferred way of using um, my media. So I think it's a really great user interface. I really like the applications built into it. And as a Plex Pass member, I get a ton of great features that I really enjoy having. But if my internet goes out for whatever reason, or I'm having an issue with Plex, um, which is, to be honest, very rare, Jellyfin's a great solution as well. So. I have no problem running both, and I think it's something a lot of people should really consider. Um, I think they both gr bring a great set of tools to uh, the table, and I don't think you have to pick one. So that's just my personal opinion. 
um, definitely choose the the one that meets your use case the best. If you want something that's easy to use, great to share. I think Plex is awesome. If you want to go on that free open source route and you want to kind of get deeper into the uh, community support and look at plugins, I think Jellyfin's a great solution as well. But for me, it was both. Um, and for you, you can decide that yourself. So thanks for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. Hopefully you learned something today about Jellyfin, Plex, or just server administration in general. Um, that's always my goal. So thanks and have a great rest of your day.